Run it up, then run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Run it back. Run it up, run it back. Yeah. Run it up, then run it back. Yeah, yeah. It's happening. It's season two of Run It Back. We made it. We made it. We didn't know. It was close and it got real weird for a second there, but we made it. So the intros will begin. I'm saving the new guy for last. So <clears throat> to my right. I can't believe I have to do this. Stadium Insider. Yeah, like starting lineup. Sham Sharad. I know. It was like a whole thing standing. Shams, welcome back. Good. Uh, why am I asking? Did you take a vacation? Uh, I, yeah, I did. I did a little bit of vacation. I did one week in Portugal, but you know, it's, it's, it's always hard for me to stay but you, fully. But you brought focused. your phone and got on Wi-Fi quick. No question. Yeah. No questions asked. International plan, everything. Is that so. a vacation? No, <laughs> no, it's not. But I'm, I'm happy you it's left my the vacation. country. Yeah, it's you my did. Version. Wow. He'll take a call in the middle of the show. Yeah, he actually will. That's what he does. Because sure. they're important, and he needs to. Uh, nine year NBA vet and recent father <clears throat> of a baby boy. Now there are too many youths walking around the earth. How crazy is How's that? How's it feel? Life comes at you fast, Michelle. <laughs> Here we are. First day of school. <laughs> First day of school. We're already yeah. sweating. And the newest yeah. member of the Run It Back family, roll it. Last second shot. Score. Pull up on the block. My goodness. Move well. Score. 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 Okay. Seen 17 so year NBA vet, three times yeah. six man of the year. <clears throat> Lou Williams is here, y'all. Okay, you feeling good? How you feeling? I'm, I'm amazing. I'm happy to be here. Be We're here doing with this. you guys. Let's have some fun. We had no Let's rehearsals. Um, hopefully you won't be able to tell that here in a yeah. second. But we're just going for it because it's Monday and the season actually starts tomorrow. And my goodness, I'm ready to get there. Vacation, you live a vacation. Lou, was your summer great? <laughs> I live a vacation. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Two <laughs> what did you do this summer, this offseason? Uh, I went to show. Greece. Oh, I did that? take a vacation. It was lovely. Great place to be. I yeah. miss, how Greece. do you know? Like, how do you know? I'm just saying, it's probably a great place to be. <laughs> Google it. Google it once. <laughs> I saw it in a picture. Yeah. Once, and it was saw it in a movie. Saw it online. So, I, I saw Chandler's story when yeah. he went. You know, that's I lived it through we him. We lived Stop through it. him. Yeah. Well, no vacations from here until the end of the NBA Finals because we're going to be here almost every okay. single day to get you through it. And we start with the off-season storylines of which there were a few. Um, the biggest one, look, we're about 24 hours away from this bad boy and this one, Damian Lillard going to the Milwaukee Bucks. It shocked a lot of us. Uh, there's the trade, you're looking at it right there. What you basically need to take away from this is Damian Lillard's on the left, that's one player. And then in return, everyone else got all these other players, Drew Holiday being the big name there in the middle of Trailblazers, of course we know He's gone, but look, Shams, all of us had our phones. I've got my Shams notification set. I'm sitting here waiting on Lillard to go to the Miami Heat. And then all of a sudden I'm thinking there's a typo. How, how did we get here? Yeah, so L Lillard and the Heat, really, they, they both obviously wanted to be <laughs> together. And they believe Portland had absolutely no interest in doing any deal. It got to the point where Joe Cronin, the GM in Portland, he did not return any of the calls from Damian Lillard, Damian Lillard's agent. Um, they went weeks without communicating. I mean, there was a point where Damian Lillard was in the facility um, in September working out, and there was no communication. Joe Cronin, there was no hi, hello, no, no pleasantries exchanged. And that's, I think, when Damian Lillard knew, I'm going to get traded. It's only a matter of, of where and when. Um, and he obviously ends up get, getting traded to Milwaukee. And we know the pressure that the Bucks have been under. When you think about Giannis, and Kumpo made those comments uh, a couple months ago now and said, I, I just want to win the championship. If that's not in Milwaukee, I'm fine. I mean, really opening the door for his exit. And John Horst, the GM there, you have to give him credit. In 2020, when, when Giannis' Supermax extension was on the line, they go out and get Drew Holiday. Now when Giannis' extension, he's, he's, from what I'm told, he's not going to extend. But his future's up in the air. They go out and get Damian Lillard. Man. And I think they're still trying to fit in. They're still trying to find their, their, their place. But from what I'm told, Dame and Giannis are hitting it off, and I think Dame is happy now with the result. I mean, look, they they jumped up to plus 380 to win a championship on the FanDuel Sportsbook. I, I, I don't know if Dame was excited to move to Milwaukee. As a fan and a consumer of the product of basketball, it's exciting to me. Um, are they now in the running for the best? I mean, look, when you look at the Eastern Conference, it's, it's Milwaukee and it's Boston, and then there's a drastic drop-off. But when you look on paper, this this – makes sense. It fits, right? Damian Lillard can shoot the ball at an elite level. He can play make. He opens up the lanes for Giannis, and that's exactly what he needs. But to sit here and automatically assume this is a huge <laughs> upgrade over Drew Holiday, who has won them a championship, who Team USA is now making the point that we want this guy going to the Olympics. 
He can lock down the best offensive score on the other team. So there are some questions, but yeah, when you look offensively, you look at this team and you can get a healthy Chris Middleton and some of the other signings, some of the guys they brought back, they're going to be right there at the end of the season to compete for a championship. The Drew Holiday part, I think, was bittersweet for a lot of people. We didn't want to see him go. Um, big fan of everything he's done on the court. All right, Lou, this is it's a very pointed question. Is Dame Lillard that much of an upgrade over Holiday? Offensively, yes. And after that, it's a very polite no. <laughs> <laughs> just to piggyback off of what Chandler just said, look, you've won a championship with Drew Holiday already. Um, he was one of the anchors of that team. So it's hard to say a guy is an upgrade um, after replacing the guy that you've won a championship with, and that guy being Damian Lillard, you know, who's it can change any the trajectory of any team that he's going to play on, you know. So I don't I don't know if it's if upgrade is the word, um, but he definitely gives them the same opportunity Drew Holiday gave them in winning the championship, if not a better one. Yeah, so and, yeah. And to me, the key is Chris Middleton. Last year, he went mm. through so many injuries. You know what you're going to get with Giannis. You know you're, what you're going to get with Damian Lillard, but. People forget quickly how good he was and how he was kind of their go time go to score. He, he closed he, games. He, he, he was closing out the the the, the Nets as on the as, road. As, in yeah, game seven. as good as Giannis, Giannis is. Yeah. Give me a give me a healthy Chris Middleton. Now we're talking about this team and that trio as the best trio in the NBA. It's this is the thing, and I, it's amazing to me that Drew Holiday ended up in Boston. Do you think that they would have made this trade if they would have known that he was just gonna? Mm be in the same conference, not that far off, the other contender. I don't Absolutely think so. Not. No, yeah, right? I don't think so. No. <laughs> but that's the risk that you're willing to take when you move a guy like Drew Holiday to a rebuilding team like Portland. You can't imagine he's going to last there. You can't imagine that. But now it's kind of they made their bed and they got to sleep in it because that's going to be the guy on the team that they're going to have to go through to get to the finals. I kind of love it. It's almost like they weren't done screwing with him. Like, oh, yeah, now watch this. We're going to keep it's it a, moving. It's a dice roll, and it might backfire. <laughs> Look, the East was not the only place where moves were happening. Obviously, the West as well. The NBA never sleeps. And on that side of thing, you had Bradley Beal to the Suns, uh, Chris Paul to the Wizards, who then ended up with the Warriors. And he's going to start, you guys. He mm. wants you to know that. Jordan Poole and a bunch of picks to the Wizards, then later traded. It's just, it's confusing. I don't know about That's, Chris Paul starting, by the way. He's not going to start. Yeah, really? But nobody wants to tell him that because it's awkward. All right. Um, Beal had the very big, famous, beautiful, delicious no trade clause. One of the few in NBA history. It's, to have. it's a wonderful thing. All power to you. But did it affect how everything went down for him? No question it affected things. I mean, if Damian Lillard, uh, let's be honest, if he had a no trade clause, he would have been in Miami now. So Bradley Beal negotiates a no trade clause. And I think we finished our show the week that Bradley <laughs> Beal got traded. So this is a good kind of. Uh, circle, you know, m all moment, cool. all, all coming full circle now. But I think the leverage that comes with that no trade clause and the fact that he wanted to go to Phoenix. And I think the, the one thing that I've been told between him, Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, th they, they've they talked and, and it's hmm. like, we, we don't, we're not trying to see who's going to score 35 points. If, if it takes, if we're one of us is at 18, 20, any given night, 15, as long as we win a championship, I don't think these guys care, but I think, of course, having the no-trade no clause, that led him to Phoenix. And at that point, it was Matt Ishbia, James Jones, Josh Bartlestein uh, going out and meeting with him in New York and selling him. They were the only team out of all the teams to go out and meet, get a meeting with him. So hmm. that clinched it. They're like, we're not wasting time otherwise. Uh, KD has said, this big three that you just mentioned, that once they're rolling, off and rolling, they're going to be impossible to stop. We do <clears> love a big three. They are tied for phase with the Nuggets right now, um, FanDuel Sportsbook. But we've seen big threes fail, Lou. How does this one look to you? It looks really good. I close my eyes, get about any of those guys, <laughs> and, and ask them to go win us a basketball game. So, impossible, uh, you know, this is the NBA, but if we're probably as close to impossible <laughs> as impossible is going to get with, with Bradley, Book, um, and, and KD at the helm of that team. And when, when you look at how those three guys play, the question is, you know, who's the point guard, right? Do you take Book, you know, away from what he does really well and make him bring it up? Do you have a guy like a Kogi initiate the offense? But those three guys can go one-on-one. -on -one. Those three guys can go get out and transition. They're, they're so talented and they're so explosive offensively. I'm not really worried about who their point guard is. They have capable guys to bring the ball up and get into sets. I agree. It's gonna. They're gonna have to take turns. They're gonna have to be unselfish. Some one. It's gonna be a different guy every single night. But man, on paper and and on film, they fit. And if they're healthy, I think they're the team to beat in the West. What is the weakness, if you have to? 
I mean, who's going to defend outside of Josh Kogi? Or, or who's going to play point guard? Is their bench going to is their bench going to provide sparks? I, I like their signings. I like Drew Eubanks off the bench. I like Nurkic starting in the, the so they have the team. I love Eric Gordon who can come in and knock down threes. Um, but I think that point guard is a huge question. I mean, Jordan Jordan Goodwin is he's a backup. He's their, he's a, he's and he's their backup. only yeah. point guard True point on the guard. roster. So that's, that's <laughs> and it. you know, as the season goes along, it's all about depth. Yeah. It's all yeah. about depth. You deal with injuries. You deal with different things. That bench is going to have to try to win them a lot of basketball games. So I think that's where the weakness comes in for me. Um, KD's had his share. That actually sounded awful. I'm going to redo that. <laughs> KD has been a part of very important big threes in his life. There have been some really good ones. Um, we're going to take a look right now, Chandler. I'm going to put you on the spot. I want you to choose which of these. If you had to rank them. Okay. I mean, that ain't a bad list to be on. Yeah. I mean, geez. I, I think the the best, obviously, is the Warriors, right? I don't. Th I think they continue to win championships <laughs> until last year if he didn't leave. So I go number one, Warriors, and then going to the I'm bottom, you got to go the Nets fourth. They played about seven games together with each other. Oh, that's other. the bottom. Okay. That's the last. What a weird way you're doing your list. Yeah, I just going from best <laughs> okay. and automatically the worst. All the drama that that team was riddled with. Injuries. I think they were ten and three it, together. It, but yeah, but it's a small sample size. I know. Like, yeah, I, I can't. I can't really rank small. them. The Thunder was. They, they were. I think the Suns had the chance to be the second best big three he has. But the Thunder, they were young. They weren't quite in their prime yet. These yeah. guys are all in their prime. It's, it's. 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 They're all healthy. I think it goes Golden State, Phoenix, OKC. Than Brooklyn, so Phoenix as as getting the nod. Without... I think I think they can be. I think they can be, and I think they can win a championship. And that Oklahoma City team never did. Agree. Yeah, I stay. I stay with that. Yeah, I feel like that was good. I mean, the the Oklahoma City one. What could have been? Oh. I feel like that will always be a what could have been. Um, whenever we look back on that entire time, uh, the more the more stuff happened. You guys, Kristaps Porzingis. Remember him? They once called him the unicorn, but that has now been stolen and given to other people since. Uh, traded to the Celtics. Marcus Smart then goes to the Grizzlies. Tyus Jones, Danilo Gallinari now in the nation's capital. Um, as far as best starting lineups, people are saying maybe the Celtics team. Do you agree with that? It's one of them. I don't know who they're going to start. I don't know if Horford's going to start, if they're going to start KP and Horford. I'm probably the biggest Derek White fan in America. I think he's so solid. I think he can score. I think he can defend. He can shoot. He can play and make. I do think losing someone like Marcus Smart to their locker room, to their culture, <laughs> is is tough. But. I know preseason is preseason, but Porzingis looked good, and he looked very, very strong. He looked healthy. He could he shoot looked stronger, the ball. right? Like he looks better. Cousins. Okay. But it's tough to put my eggs in that basket after everything you know the, of what we've seen. But yeah, just for for me, this is still the best team in the Eastern Conference. To me, it just feels like it's it's their time. I think Tatum and Brown are entering their prime. They're ready. They struggled last year in the playoffs a little bit, but they're going to grow from that. They're going to get better from that. They have a good bench. Um, but it's just, it's, it's like every team, it's all who's healthy and who gets hot <laughs> in the playoffs. Um, so you have Holiday, you have Porzingis. So somebody has to, I don't want to say suffer, but their, their role's going to change. Who's that? One of those two. It ain't going to be Brown. No, they're not changing not, at all. It's not going to be JT, uh, and it's not going to be Jay. So... Porzingis, you got to get in where you fit in, bro. <laughs> you got to get in where you fit in. You know, those two guys have always anchored that basketball team, accomplished so many different things, you know, without having expectations, you know, and, and to do that. So to add Drew Holiday, to add Porzingis, those guys got to get in where they fit in. I mean, there were moments last year where those two guys, JT and, and Jay, like, they disappeared in the playoffs. I mean, I, I remember you just being frustrated, like, yeah. what's going on? So now when th those types of things happen, you figure out, is this a trend or was this just a blip? What do you do with that from last year carrying into this season if you're those guys? Well, I think it's a blip for now, but if it continues this season and uh, then it becomes a trend, then it's an issue. But uh, I, issue. I don't think they worry about them. I think you look at two of these guys, possibly the best duo. You know, there's so many these days, duos, trios, but these two guys are elite. They can do everything on the floor. They both are two-way players. They can defend. And now you add a Drew Holiday who has that experience in the postseason to relieve pressure. Hopefully Przingis is healthy. Derek White, Al Horford, guys like this, uh, they can relieve pressure. But yeah, the best players show up in the postseason, and those two didn't do that last year. So they definitely have an onus on them to step up this year and kind of carry this team to a championship. Sometimes a disappointing finish is the best thing that can happen to a team. Um, does that strike you here? Is that interesting to you here? No question. And obviously we know about the players. J J like Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, those guys being superstars is going to take this team where they're going to go. But to me, what I'm looking at is Joe Mazzula. Last season, I think there was a lot of scrutiny there. 
Um, you know, his, his coaching staff, it was a tough position position for him to be in. Literally, he takes over a few days before <laughs> training camp. Ime Yudoka's out. So now he gets a full summer to, to kind of get, get ingratiated there. And then they, they've really toughened up the staff. Charles Lee comes over. He was the lead assistant in Milwaukee. They get Sam Cassell. He comes over from Philadelphia. Like, they really beefed up that bench. I think Chandler touched on that. Like, their bench needed to be stronger uh, supporting a rookie head coach. And now they have... Uh, I, I think done that. So the spotlight's going to be on Joe Mazzula because there, there are guys on that bench there that are very, very proven. I don't, I'm not going to sit here and say which one's the better player, Drew Holiday or Marcus Smart, but we all know the value of Marcus Smart to the fans of Boston in that locker room. For Drew Holiday, is that an upgrade for the Celtics? I say no. I say no. When I think of Marcus Smart, you know, I feel like he was the heartbeat of that team. Um, he was one of those guys that championed the traditions of you know, being a Boston Celtic, he was the energy guy, he was the locker room guy. You know, so when I, even though JT um, and, and Jalen were the best players on that team, when I think of the Boston Celtics, I always thought of Marcus Smart. Um, and so basketball wise, I think so, but you know, locker room wise, culture wise, I say it was Marcus Smart. Yeah, and Lou makes a good point. A lot of time it's not about the production. It's, it's, it's all the little things that a Marcus Smart can do. It's that locker room. It's the culture in the weight room and in the, the facility. And he provided all that. And when you do think of the Boston Celtics, obviously the fans, they think of Tatum, they think of Brown, they think of points, they think of highlights. Right. Marcus Smart has been the heartbeat of the team. And I think Drew Holiday is an upgrade offensively, being a true point guard, having the history of being a champion. But he's going to be missed there for sure. I'm going to miss him. Yeah. And I'm not even a fan of that team. Um, Off-season trades, what did they result in percentage-wise? Who are we thinking are the favorites? Who are on top? We'll take a look right now. This is the final question for this part, guys. It's that this is how FanDuel Sportsbook has decided these guys are going to finish out. Boston Celtics sitting up top. I don't. I, do we agree? Is there anything on there that we're changing? Poor Memphis. Why? Uh, I mean, I'm surprised Memphis is even on there, to be honest. <laughs> well, I mean, they're at just... And Cleveland, they're kind of a long shoot. I mean, it's hard to sleep on the champs, that. right? Everyone always forgets the, the, these yeah. guys. They didn't make too many moves, but that, that's the same consistent product that they had last year that, that got it done. So I, I, I don't ever overlook them, but yeah, the Celtics are my team. That's okay. Yeah. Same. I'm going with the champs again. Nice. I'm just, I'll just add something different to the, yeah. to the conversation. I do believe, like, you, you sort of get to be the favorite until you're not. You earn that. Yeah. At until least until they're now. beat, they're the champs. Um, we're going to take a quick break here. When we come back, James Harden, can he play nice? Can he play at all in Philly? I don't know. We'll find out run next on Run It Back. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back. Yeah. Run it back. Yeah. Yeah. Fans, man, it's like, I uh, just appreciate the support and love. And, and, you know, I mean, it's definitely it's a difficult time, but for me, it's just trusting, you know, uh, the people that you've known over decades. Um, and, you know, when I got traded here, my, my whole thing was I wanted to retire at 60. You know what I mean? Like, I wanted to be here and retire at 60. And the front office didn't have that in their, in their future plans. You know what I mean? So, like, it's literally out of my control. Um, it's something that I, I didn't. I didn't want to happen in the system being in this position. But, you know, I, I got to make a, a decision for, you know, my family. I understand this is a business. Man, that got real serious, Shams. Whoa, what's the latest on James Harden? So James Harden has not been present around the Sixers in nine days. And he's not there today as they're starting the week. It's game, it's game week. They, they have their opener in Milwaukee on Thursday. There's no sign on when or if James Harden will rejoin the 76ers. But like, let's take a look at this. He's played no preseason games. He's had one day. Oh, he's participated in scrimmage of, in practice once, and that was October 7th. So that was a couple weeks ago now. Um, and, and at this point, given that he's, he's only done five on five once, he hasn't played any preseason games. At this point, he's been away from the team for almost two weeks. There's no sign of him coming back anytime soon. I think the 76ers are operating as if it's, it's unlikely he's gonna start games to, to begin this season. It does not sound like a player that's in position to play. So when you look at the Sixers, they've been talking to the Clippers. They've been negotiating for months now. Philadelphia has asked for Terrence Mann, a first round pick, a swap. The Clippers do not want to do that. They don't want to give up anything more than salaries, a first, and a swap. And so Daryl Morey, we know what his MO has always been. Going, going getting a star. And so could he take this into the season and just wait right. for a trade to develop, wait for a three-way to develop? 
who knows, Chicago, does do one of their guys get available? Do you look at Toronto with Pascal Siakam? Like, you guys have been around Daryl Moore. You guys know what his MO is. So I, there's no clarity on when James Harden will play again for the Sixers. Obviously, we, he said it. He, he doesn't want to play for Daryl Moore ever again. He's a liar. Hmm. Wow, that was, uh, that was a loud he's a liar that was said around the world. Um, you guys, you played with Harden. You know Maury. What, what is your take on all this? So I obviously think this is a sticky, sticky situation, That's, Michelle. That was, that was nice. uh, There's layers to this. And James Harden, at the end of the day, he's, he feels like he was betrayed. He feels like he was lied to. He went to a situation that he wanted to, you know, retire a sixer, he just said, right? Did you believe that? I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> okay. there's the, but it doesn't look like he is. And he's not going to play anytime soon. And he just feels like they, they didn't give him that big contract that he wanted. He went there. He played really well last year in the playoffs. I think he had two 40-point double-doubles. He played good. They, only, they took the Celtics to seven games. They could have won that series. He helps Joel Embiid win MVP. A lot of things went on internally there. There's the sell of the team with Michael Rubens now out, who is James's guy. Um, and he just feels like he was lied to and not treated correctly and that he wanted to trade to the Clippers and that was going to happen and now it's not going to happen. And now here we are, season starts tomorrow and their second best player has not even been in camp with them. So this is this is going to be a, a long situation. It's going to be you know drawn out. He's not playing anytime soon. And this is a complete dismantling of a team, I think. The minute they start off two and eight, three and Oof. seven, James is eventually going to get moved. Don't be surprised if Joel Embiid then asks for a trade, and this is going to be a dumpster fire in Philly. That's the th yeah. It does feel like a lot of ugly is on our way. Do you have advice? Like, what do, what do you make of all this? Selfishly, I'm a big Sixers fan. Spent my first seven years there. They deserve a winner. Um, for me, I would like to see J.A. show up, um, deliver what's needed for that city. Um, great fan base, and at the same time, it's going to be difficult for him to coexist a normal life in Philadelphia mm. um, at this rate. That fan base, <laughs> they're very vocal about, yes. about their feelings about things, especially when you're showing that you're not in solidarity with them. Um, so, you know, J.H. is my guy, personal friend. I would love to see him show up um, and deliver for that team. You know do what? we think he's, do you suspect him this week I, I don't all? think he's like, wrong. I don't think he's wrong. Right. No. no. You know, but don't. do you think he's handling it? Like, would you handle it this way? Um, Lou's a professional. Lou's a professional. He's like, mm. It's a lot of money, man. It's a yeah. <laughs> and look, this, oh, yeah. this isn't it's like the Ben money. Simmons situation where he, this, this right. is an excused absence, right? He's not being fined. So you got to look, you got to okay. take that however you're getting taken, right? Like he, he's clearly allowed to be away from the team. So there's some accountability on the front office here. And hmm. Daryl Morey's different, right? He's, he's Billy Bean. He's Moneyball. He looks at players not like humans. They're, they're assets, right? And, and at the end of the day, he has a job and he's trying to protect his job and he's trying to have longevity of his job just as James is with his career. James feels like all I have to do is win a championship, and he thought he had that in Philly, and and now he doesn't. And now again, it is it is chaos there. Well, we all thought we all thought that James and Daryl would be that undestructible yes. bond. That yeah. I mean, you guys have been around both. You guys have have been you know the beneficiary of of that relationship. You guys have been on the other side of that relationship. So like, what is your perspective? The fact that. We always thought, thought those two guys were thick as thieves. Yeah, people lie. It's what have you done for <laughs> me lately? Wow, well, can I benefit? And, and but Daryl to James? And that is Daryl. Listen, I was drafted by the Rockets. Daryl was my GM, and I was a second round pick. And he would ask me my opinion in my second and third year of who we like. Do we want Dwight hmm. Howard? Do we want this guy? So the minute that he did not do that to James, he probably felt a certain way, right? And he probably felt slighted. He probably felt that, why isn't this guy who's family to me kind of treating me with the same respect he used to in Houston? And at the end of the day, he feels as if he was lied to. And now I think it's to the point where it's unsalvageable. And I think there's a nasty, nasty breakup coming. It feel, are you shocked? that? Because I, I would have thought when this, I mean, this has been going on for a while. I would have thought Daryl Morey would have been the guy that was removable. And we would have sort of seen the team do that. Is anyone surprised by that? That is more. It's Maury still there, and it's early. would that even fix it? Like, if you got rid of Maury today, and I'm not advocating for that, but would James Harden then show up? What mm. do we think? Well, it, here's the thing: it's not about James Harden and Joel or James and Nick Nurse. This is definitely right. a beef with him, possibly the new ownership. Um, but James Harden is kind of—he's not in his prime right now, right? So, like, they're not just going to fire Daryl Morey, who's kind of good at what he's good at what he does, right? He gets assets, he he finds gems in late in the second round, <laughs> like myself. Stop! You know just I mean? Stop! No, <laughs> but it's—it's it's, it's definitely it feel it feels like this isn't going to get fixed anytime soon. It's a shame because. 
them healthy and them playing, they can compete. And they, they again, last year they took the Boston Celtics to seven games. But now it's uh, it's 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 done in my eyes. And with their relationship, it's hard for it's hard for James not to take it personal. You know yeah. how close they've been over the years, and you know Daryl was one of the one of the reasons that James was even interested in being in Philadelphia. And so, how close those two got in 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 their relationship and in business, it's hard for him not to take it personally. I I wish I I really don't know what to expect come Thursday. Like, is he just going to show up? No. No. I'm shocked. They said it. They said it. Yeah, that's it. (laughs) I'm going to put money on yes, just in case. Uh, I want to make sure I cover myself. Uh, On the West Coast, we've got the Clay Thompson. Well, now all eyes will be on that for a while. Is there a future there in Golden State? Do we see an extension get done with Mr. Thompson? Yeah, the the Warriors and Clay Thompson have been discussing an extension. But from what I'm told, there's a significant gap in years and money. The negotiations right now, from what I'm told, they're at a dead point. So Thompson wants much more than what the Warriors are offering overall in in both years and salary. Mm. And the Warriors have dealt with multiple Klay Thompson free agencies, multiple Steph Curry free agencies. We saw with Draymond Green, he was he was not extended last year and then he had a he had a solid year and they ended up paying him. They kept him and they kept their big 3 together and he got paid. So as of right now all signs point to to Klay Thompson going into free agency in the summer, oh, not getting an extension done. And in an ideal world, the Warriors want to take care of him. They want to pay him. But they also want to see how the season goes. And Klay Thompson, he's going to have a chip on his shoulder, I think. But this is not where I expected to be with Klay Thompson. In my mind, it was just that's a, a team that was made to always stick together. But does he test free agency? Does he, <laughs> does he go out there? Where should he go? Well, this situation should show fans and people in the world that this is a business. Mm-hmm. And no matter how good of a guy, Klay Thompson's probably the nicest guy I've ever met in my life. And he is unhappy. And he wants an extension. He's not getting it. And I see both sides here, right? He thinks, what more could I have given to this franchise? We've got four championships. I'm a Hall of Famer. I deserve to be paid. I deserve to be treated with respect. And and this is my home. And I don't want to go anywhere. And on the flip side, the Warriors are thinking he is out of his prime. He is coming off an Achilles, an ACL injury. So it, it, it's tough. And, and you know, the, the guys that are making $30, $35, $40 million, Clay wants to be paid like that. But the Warriors kind of don't see him as their future plans, and they don't see him in his prime and kind of on the decline. So it, they're kind of just butting heads. And it's weird to picture him somewhere it's else. so weird. It's definitely weird to picture him somewhere else. But maybe it comes to that, and, 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 and I'm all for him going and getting his bag somewhere else if he's not taken care of there. I look at it differently. I, I think I think Clay would be a valuable number two piece um, coming in the near future. Me dealing with an ACL tear, it took me about two years to get back um, to the level of play that I was used to. Um, I think going into year two after that injury for Clay, I, I expect a big year for him. Does it feel like they just picked Draymond over everyone? It feels like, you know, Jordan Poole, you're out. Now this, which I would have never guessed. I always thought Clay Thompson is a warrior for life. It, it sort of feels like that. Have they put themselves in that situation? Like, I can't figure that out. I wouldn't say, I mean, they didn't even offer Draymond Green an extension before last season. They offered Clay Thompson an extension. It's mm-hmm. just not where Clay Thompson wants it to be. And so now it's, it's a situation where he's going to play out the year. He's going to bet on himself. He's going to see, all right, can I return to the Clay Thompson of old form? And if I do, then th- these, these people will have to pay up what I want. <laughs> and, and if I can't, then I'm sure the Warriors are thinking, okay, you're going to take what we've already offered you. So yeah. it's it's kind of, it, it's not as, as you know, it, it's not just the easy, okay, right. we're just going to extend. It's, I think both sides clearly want to see, you know, where they're going to go. It's a win-win for the Warriors, right? If he, if he plays good, yeah. they got prime Clay Thompson. If he plays bad, they're just going to give him what they've already offered him. Yeah, I mean, if you offer me garbage, is that an offer? I mean, it feels like you're just sort Isn't of Isn't it funny that 24, 25 million is uh, well, garbage? I'm speaking as someone else, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would kill families for that much money, but that's another story. Uh, you say still a viable number two. Absolutely. You think so, too? Not on a championship team, and I love him, but I think, I think he's a third option. I think he's a fourth option. I think he can still put up 20, 30, 40-point games consistently, but it, it, it's, it's tough. It's, nowadays, everyone's got that one-two punch that are in their prime, that are elite, and I think and that's no knock on him. He's had a hell of a career, he, and he's looked really good at times last year, and I would love him to come out and dominate again and get back yeah. to that level, but a, a two-option on a championship team now is tough. So this is an actual game I've played with friends, with Clay Thompson specifically, because we were trying to think, like, where else? If he's one of those players, you don't picture him in another uniform. I just, I cannot do it. So I'm trying to. And with his boat and his lifestyle that he seems <laughs> to just absolutely love out there, 
If you have to put him somewhere else, where are you putting him? I mean, he's a plug and play player on any team, right? Every team could use a Clay Thompson. There's a pissed off shooting guard in Philly. That I, I, <laughs> that I could maybe see, uh, you know what I mean? I could see him with Joel. I could see him, I, again, he is a special elite player that can shoot the ball and, and he, any team will want him. It's just yeah. that what number. God, do you have any place that you could, I mean, the Philly thing would be interesting. Maybe it would keep him be yeah, happy. I'm very much like you. I don't see him playing anywhere else. It's just it's a it's a weird dynamic. I think he becomes a meme, one of those forgotten NBA players. <gasps> He's in a Miami Heat jersey no. or something. Yeah. Somewhere weird. I don't I don't see it. I I, I would like for him to finish out. He's gotta State. have water wherever he goes, right? It's true. He's very big on the water. 100%. Figure it out, Golden State. Don't let him leave. They'll figure it out. Yeah. They always do right by the Yeah. Guys. I feel on. like they'll figure it out. All right, we got that. Believe it or not, we have a that man has a family. It's a preseason edition. But it counts. And I would say some of these are probably a foreshadowing of what's to come. <clears throat> we'll get to those in a second. But first up, Paolo Banquero. He's a I monster. I love that we hear mm. these already. This is awesome. This kid, by the way, Orlando Sneaky. This kid is going to have a big year. I think Orlando is one of those teams that could make the play in and make some really? noise in the Eastern Conference. <laughs> it's wide open. They could make the play in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a big step That's for Orlando. Step. Are you right, kidding cool. me? This guy, too, cool. playing on Team USA, getting that experience, I think he's going to be super valuable and he's going to have a huge year. Well, shouldn't they be good? They feels like they should be good. Feels like they haven't been Better. good since I was in high school growing it's up. It's been a while. Orlando. Yeah, it's, 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 it's been a minute. So they're, oh, they're, right. they're overdue. Your connection to Florida. Yeah. I forgot about that. See, All right, like, so that's fun. And Valentunas is no no tiny person. Uh, Zion. By the way, Lou, what you'll, what you'll realize is that during this segment, it's usually a white man getting dumped. <laughs> <laughs> it's 99% is a white guy. It's, it's science. With what do you want? You what do you want? Yeah. I mean, look, last time we talked about Zion. We need to see that in the regular Ooh. season all year. Yes, come on. Don't get, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I would love to. Hey, today is a good day, a day at yeah. a time. With yeah, that. right? That's, Seriously. One time. And now, I believe the future, well, we're about to see it in the next two. I don't even need to say anything. Yeah, this is <laughs> crazy. But the best part about this clip was Thomas Bryant's yes. reaction. His face was like, oh my God. His looking what at just the happened? bench, like, yeah. what am I supposed to do with this? I hope he showed that. What do y'all think about as players? Like, does he not look like a cartoon? It's. We've never seen anything like it. We don't know what to compare it to, right? It's go go gadget arms, he can handle, yeah. he can shoot. It's kind of crazy looking. I mean, that if that's what we get to see all season long, then here you go. He can do other things as well. Blocks are fun. Yeah, he's got great instincts. <laughs> he's, he can come across the help side defense, block shot. That's probably where he's most valuable is on the defensive end, honestly. What are guys making of this, you think? I think he's got a little bullseye on his back. I think guys are going to definitely go at him. He has No one's been this hype since LeBron. So I mean, no. He, people are going to be going at him. Unfortunately, Michelle, he's just not, he's on a team that's not going to win a lot of games. And... Thank you, Michelle. He's going to change the name. Shut up. <laughs> wow. Here you go. Uh. Another rookie. This kid's Some, done, Somebody help know. him up. Yeah, him <laughs> and Scoot. Him and Scoot can, man. It's always a dicey play to take the charge, Lou. Yeah, it's dicey. <laughs> it. it's, it's dicey. <laughs> Even if you get the call, people just think Ooh. it was a Ooh. bad call and they took it away. Yeah, I'm getting out the way. Yeah. Swipe. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll deal with it. See, I, I, don't, I, I don't like how the refs call offensive foul on plays like that. That, that should, Did they call a charge that, here? Yeah, they call a charge. That That's, should be an and uh, one. For that sure. shot, that angle is awesome, though. <laughs> Why is he just laying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ban the charge. Charge on post. R.I.P. Who is that? Daniel Somebody Gafford. Oh, see, and also, if you're a center, also don't take charges. Go, Ever? Go meet him at the rim. All right. How about Cam Whitmore? Yeah. Oh my lord. I like he was this. Not in oh the God, picture that's a charge. This. That's, that's a charge. No. There's right? a reason for that. That's a charge too. When's the last time you dunked a basketball like that? 2016. <laughs> like a, a white guy. See, he just take a charge. Doug McDermott. That's what we do. <laughs> He's the little the things. <laughs> Daniel Gafford, go get it. It didn't go his way though. No. I, I, Ooh, pretty, I mean, usually look, doesn't. It usually doesn't, Lou. There's no way I would stand in front of anyone doing. Would you, Shams? I mean, we're just no. civilians. Like, no, I, I, don't saw, play, I don't even play defense. I, don't I saw some Shams highlights. It makes two summer. of us, Shams. Yeah, yeah? it makes three of us. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle's probably the best defender. I actually on like playing defense. <laughs> yeah, you're the best defender. I played, on I played in a quote-unquote <laughs> celebrity feisty. game once. She's feisty. Yeah. And I had to guard Turtle, uh, oh. Jerry Ferrara, and he got Shout mad at Jerry me at one point because I was playing defense. Because I can't. What else am I going to do? I'm not going to shoot it. There's no way. All right, time to look at the future, Zion. Is he going to dominate and when be rookie of the year, right? Yes. When run it back returns. Run it back, run it back, run it up, run it up.
the running back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, 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 run it up. This NBA season, there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel because right now FanDuel is hooking up all customers with three months of NBA League Pass Suite when you place a $5 bet on the NBA. It doesn't matter if you're new to FanDuel or already have an account, everyone can watch and bet the action live with NBA League Pass. So download the app today and see why FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. Why are you laughing? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, I don't want to know. Uh, we've got rookies. We got well, look. We just showed a bunch of highlights of a lot of rookies so far. There are going to be a lot to watch throughout the course of the season. We're going to take three, three that we think we want to keep our eye on the most. And of course, we start with the number one dude, the cartoon, uh, the, the alien, everything that they're calling Victor Wembanyama. Um, you know the deal. Number one overall pick, most hype since LeBron. He's plus 110 on FanDuel Sportsbook to win Rookie of the Year, which makes him the favorite. And for his averages in the preseason, a little over 19 points a game, five rebounds, two blocks, and 1.73s in three games. <laughs> What do you think? What are your expectations for him? I mean, sky's the limit with this kid, right? He's an unreal talent. He, I think it's going to be a slow play for San Antonio. There's no reason to rush this guy. I wouldn't even be surprised if he was on a minute restriction to start the year. Um, but he's showcased everything he can do in preseason. He can run the floor. He can block shots. He can shoot the three. He's obviously still has his issues, and he's thin, and uh, he's going to continue to get stronger. But when you watch him, the impact he's going to have, he's going to have a great year. I just don't know how much San Antonio is going to win, but it, it, it's a, it's a it's a long play with these guys, and eventually he is going to be you know a top top five, top ten player in the NBA. I mean, Pop. He's asked obviously a lot about load management already, but. You know, I think they were thinking they were going to control the minutes and try to figure that out. But then he said, Wemby's kind of wants to be out there and he wants to play. Do you think there will be a minute restriction? I mean, you, you're going to be, I mean, I, I mean, he's so young. How, so do you, young. how do you how do you put a, a 25 minute limit, 30 minute limit on a kid that young? Now, will they be, you know, uh, you know, very cautious with him if yeah. he has if he has an injury or something like that, if he's got a sore foot? Of course. Mm -hmm. But I think they're going to let him play free. Like, are they trying to win games this year? Are they trying to make it to the finals this year? Mm -hmm. Probably not. I think mm -hmm. this is still a rebuilding team in San Antonio. I, th I think they'd still love to get a high draft pick, some assets. Uh, but I think at this point, you let Victor go. Let the man live. What? If you're on another team and you got to face <clears> him, <throat> what exactly can you even game plan? For me, I think you just put a small guard under him, just get under his skin. Um, make him work, you know, play, play with his back to the basket, shoot threes off the dribble. He has the whole package and he's almost eight feet tall. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, 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 That's it's, crazy. It's, yeah, it's, diff it's difficult to guard. So if anything, I say you just put a small guard under him and just get under his skin. Yeah. I wonder if you could place a bet on who goes at him first, like really goes at him. Patrick, yeah, who do they play? Oh, that's best. a good one. Someone on whoever they play that's first is going one. at him. The Without first game? Yeah, you Without have to. And again, that's that's how you're going to have to guard him, right? His Obviously, his weakness is his physicality. You're going to have to push him out. You're going to have to deny him, have to make it tough on him. And he has not seen this kind of physicality in the NBA night in, night out. I know Europe is a great league, and he's played against grown men, but this is a different monster, and it's a hmm. long season. So it's, it's going to be a, a test to him, but... Man, I, I would just love to see him be efficient this year. I don't want yeah. him to put up gaudy numbers, but you know, shoot 40% from the field. I would love to see him be efficient and still put up good numbers, you know, while being efficient. Have we heard any nicknames that are good? I, I, don't, I haven't. I like uh, Wimby. Yeah. Wimby's Solid. cute. San Antonio. Let's keep it simple. How about this? How about this? Uh, everyone who calls games for a living. I don't need you to have a nickname for Wembenyama, but what I do need for you to do is stop saying Wembenyana. It's not that hard. Okay, I'm not going to call anybody out by names. You know who you are. But let's stop saying it incorrectly. Okay, that's a small ask. Uh, Chet Holmgren. He is going to be a contender for Rookie of the Year. Reminder of who Chet is, because, of course, we were robbed of his first official season in the league. But he was the number two overall pick back in 2022. He missed all last season. He had the injury on the right foot. Uh, plus 320 on FanDuel Sportsbook to win Rookie of the Year. That makes him the second favorite. Any restrictions for him? Are they going to be extra cautious? I think initially probably you, you have to keep an eye on him, but this is an OKC team. I think they, they're trying to make the playoffs this year. I think they want to take another step. Uh, they're, they're homegrown internally. You look at Shea Gildas Alexander. He, he wants to win, you know, and, <laughs> and I think that the team that they're putting together, Josh Giddy, Jalen Williams, this is, this is a strong young nucleus. And so, of course, initially they're going to be careful with him, but he's hopefully also going to get the opportunity to just go. 
Yeah, the young guys that we're going to talk about, he's he's on the best team of mm -hmm. those guys, which I think has weight on voting for Rookie of the Year. And Chet's similar to Wimby, where he's a he's a freak, right? He's long, he can handle it. We haven't really seen many guys, oh. Kevin Durant, this type of body that can handle it, that can up, get a rebound, bring the ball up, transition, shoot the three. Um, and again, he he's going to be on a, on a playoff team, which I think that carries more weight than putting up numbers on a bad team as a rookie. So uh, to me, he's my rookie of the year pick. I think also having that experience like Blake Griffin did when you get hurt and you have that full year training in an NBA facility against you know your teammates running those games on a nutritional program, it's a it's a better advantage than playing in Europe. It's a better advantage than playing in college basketball. So I think he has the advantage just for the time he spent in the NBA already. And with so much hype around Wimby, I think it gives him an opportunity to just go out and play um, and be free. SGA is going to be a, a great vet to him. SGA has had great vets. You know what I'm saying? And so I think he brings him along um, and be a great Lou's trying to find himself. I know. What, what, who was, who was like a good that. Who was that? <laughs> this guy named Lou Will. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Shout out SGA. Shout, <laughs> shout out. That is big, did, right? Did you think he was going to be this good, by the yeah. way? Absolutely. Wow. Really? We were heartbroken when he got traded. Absolutely, we were crushed that he got. Even though it was for PG. You Even got. though it was for PG, we knew who PG was, but yeah. we had spent so much time and energy and kind of just being instrumental in his career and his de development, you know, just making sure he's getting extra shots. And he was so open to information, so hmm. open to learning and wanting to be great. We knew he was going to be one of those players. Where do you put him in the, the landscape of the NBA? Is he top whatever? I think he's a, I think he's a top five player this year. Mm. Yeah. Wow. I'm jumping out the window. You know what's crazy? My boy's obsessed with fantasy basketball, right? I've never played in the NBA fantasy basketball, but they hmm. took SGA with their first pick. Really? Because, I mean, the kid can do it all, right? He's yeah, going to get a yeah. lot of minutes. He's going to control the offense. He's going to have points, assists, rebounds. So Plays at his own pace. Yeah, it's crazy how much of a, you know, pro how much progress he's made in such a short time. He's a fashion risk taker. And he's like, got he provides swag, off yeah. the court as well. <laughs> yeah, it's, I've never played fantasy basketball either. That feels like too much. It's too much. That's like every night. I'm not, I don't have the attention span. Scoot Henderson, the next great volume guard. Reminder, number three overall pick in the draft. Um, went to Portland, played 19 G League games last season. He's plus 370, so he's your third favorite to win Rookie of the Year. You don't have Lillard anymore, obviously, so what does that do for him? Yeah, well, he's going to have the ball, and he's got a good big man there with DeAndre Ayton now, but he, 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 he is the most physically ready, gifted body, right? Hmm. Chet, Wimby, these guys are projects. These guys need time. This kid's ready right now, and he's going to have the keys to the franchise. He's going to, you know be the head of that snake. Uh, he played in the G League, which again, I think that's more valuable playing against guys in the G League than it is playing in college or coming from, from overseas. It's it's He's got the advantage and he's got that body like the Russell Westbrook, the John Wall type where he's so explosive where he's going to be a lot of fun to watch this year. What can't he do? I like him. I have him as my rookie of the year pick. Okay. Um, you know, he has that has that, that, that year under his belt in the G League. He's played against grown men. He's he's been he's got accustomed to um, NBA fits. Um, I have him as a rookie of the year. I think he can do it all. You, you know, he has DeAndre Ayton up there. How does that help when you're a young guy in this league? for whatever your game is going to end up being ultimately. It helps a lot. Anytime being this young and getting the keys to a franchise, that's tough. And even yeah. having a guy like Anthony Simons who can relieve that pressure, who can be that number one guy, it's not going to be Scoot every single night. And he's going to have ups and downs. We all know how hard and how long of a season this is. But he does have players that can kind of relieve some of that pressure and, and go get buckets. But he's going to be held accountable, and he's going to be a great player for a really long time. And it's just a matter of how many games, again, Portland's going to win you know, over under how many games. So it's How many it's tough. do we think that is? Let's just take a guess. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, under 35. Under uh, 33. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that one even worse than I thought it was going to do. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. When we're right now, uh, what? <laughs> yep. When we come back, future bets time, the fun stuff. Who wins what and what we think is going to happen. Run when up. Run It Back run returns. It back, Run it up, the running back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back. Ooh, run it back to the future. Get it? It's never too early to predict. And honestly, if you want to get really rich gambling, this is what I've learned. I haven't done it yet, but I'm right. trying. This is the time to start making some of these bets. So we're gonna go through them. Each person, Chandler, you're up first for for your awards. How you see them playing out? 
Okay, I got Jason Tatum <laughs> to win MVP. I feel like it's his time. He, he's he's improved every single year. He's got a great team. He's got another a year under Missoula. I think it's his year. Uh, second of all, I got Cade Cunningham as most Ooh. improved player. No one really talks about him, but he's been injured a little bit last year, but now he is back. He is fully healthy. He is going to absolutely you know, be that entire focal point of the offense. Um, he can do it all. I love him. I touched on. I love him. I, I touched on Chet Holmgren, uh, yeah, yeah. rookie of the year, with that year of experience in the NBA. I just think that's a huge, huge advantage. Um, then I got what do I got here. I got Anthony Davis to so win many. Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, I know it's a lot. I think again. I think Anthony Davis. I think he is poised for a big year. I think he know, understands that the Lakers have a good team starting the season. Right? They're not sure. going to have to make all these changes midseason like they did last year. Who knows how much longer LeBron is going to have? But he's got LeBron right now who can still dominate. I love him having a huge year. And and finally. Uh, I got Boston Celtics to win it all. Really? Again, I think last year, all the, the trials and tribulations they've had, I think Brown, Tatum are going to learn from how they played last year during the postseason. Um, like I said, I love Derek White. I love the KP if he's healthy. I love their bench. Huh. Give me the Celtics to win it all, plus 380. For the record, we were told to give three. I don't know why Chandler has 17. Well, I'm just reading what's there. on the board. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lou, you've got, uh, all right, you guys agree on MVP? You have Tatum as well? Yeah, I like, I like JT for the MVP. Uh, another year under his belt, I think this is the year that they get over that hump. Um, they make it happen. So I got him at MVP. Hmm. I got Boston winning the East. Um, that group has been together another year. Like Chandler just mentioned, trials and tribulations. I think they got a chip on their shoulder. They got so, so much to prove. Um, I think they make it happen. And I got Scoot Henderson as my rookie of the year. Oh, we all disagree on that one. I like that we have different answers. All right, mine's boring. Um, they're the favorites, but that's a coincidence. I truly believe this with <laughs> all my heart, that this is how it's going to end up. And we're going to finally get to see Damian Lillard play some relevant basketball deep into it. So we got Bucks, Suns playing for your finals. Um, obviously, Victor Wim I'm never going to change, okay? I'm going to be a homer until I die. Yeah. And, and I wish this was a bet that you could make, and maybe we could figure out a way to do that. But I do believe that Embiid will be demanding out of Philly, possibly before the All-Star break. I think that's your best <laughs> one there. I think that's lock. <laughs> you think that's it? Let's be, yeah. look, we know the drama around Harden, but is this not where the focus should be right now? There's no way Embiid's happy. This mm. is going to be the story. It's tough, right? I mean, what's new? Yeah, it's <laughs> always something in Philly, man. <laughs> always, but it's it's got to be frustrating. Lou too, sounds man. like a disgruntled Philly fan, right? I, 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 I'm He's a sick real of it. Philadelphia 76ers mm. fan. I just that's, stamp it, stamp I, it, Lou Will, stamping it. 76ers I, I grew up in that Phillies. system. Phillies winning all this year? No, no. <laughs> Philly, I, I actually do like the Phillies. Love the Phillies. This By year. the way, and like this is a cross sport moment, but the fans of the Philadelphia Phillies oh have God. become lovable, though. When? And what? The, I don't know. The whole country's behind it. I've never seen it. I never thought I'd see the day where people were behind Philly fans. I ever. never thought a baseball game could be so lit either. Watching those. It's fun. Oh, baseball games are my face. I, I, it's been kind of fun. Especially day games. We should just cross promote at that point. We got to send Lou to a Phillies game. Yeah, we do. Make it to the World Series. It's not going to work out. <laughs> it's not going to work Why out. Not? I'm a Braves fan. Oh, okay, that's fine. I'm that's a Braves fine. fan. Well, yeah, and so I'm going to wear it on my sleeve. It's not going to work that's out. That's fine. <laughs> Guys, we did it. We got our first one under our belts. Does everyone go. feel okay? Yeah, it's good to go. Clap for ourselves. Um, and tomorrow it officially, officially begins. The NBA season is upon us. Finally, this has been Run It Back, and we will be back mañana. Run it back, 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 run it back